Hello there. My name is Porav Shukla. I'm a professor of marketing at Southampton Business School at the University of Southampton. Before we talk about today's research, I would recommend you to connect with me on various social media channels, including Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram. I would also recommend that you visit my website, porovshukla.com, where you will find a number of free resources, including free books and articles that are written by me and uh, several thought pieces and so on and so forth. So please do connect as well as visit my website. Today, I want to talk to you about a very exciting research that we did over the last five, seven years around shopping cart abandonment. This is a big challenge, and we try to find a potential solution to this challenge, and that's what I want to talk about today. So let me start with a very simple scenario. Why shopping cart abandonment is a challenge in retailing industry? Think about it. Imagine that you have gone to a supermarket. You visited the supermarket and you uh, took a trolley. You went into the supermarket. You um, bought a few things. You went to the till. And at that point in time, when you went to the till, you just decided for no reason to leave the till, uh, leave the trolley at the till and just walk away. Now, nobody can stop you and nobody would stop you. But at the same time, how would you feel about that? Probably not that good. And how many times you've actually done it? Chances are that you have not actually done this exercise ever. Uh, people generally buy, if you go to the store, they put things in the trolley and they generally tend to buy most of those things in the trolley. There are times wherein it may have happened that you have forgotten your wallet or suddenly your card is not working and so on and so forth. But most of the time, in a way, you would not abandon a shopping cart. However, think about a different context. Imagine you are online. You're right now browsing a website. You like something. Say, for example, you're browsing a clothes website. You like something, you like the trouser, you like the skirt, you like the shark, you like the suit, something, and you put that in your shopping basket. And then after a while, browsing for a few other things, you put them also in the shopping basket and then you decided, okay, I don't want to buy this today. And you just leave. And how many times have you done that? Personally speaking, I have done that several times, even within the last few months and probably last few weeks. And so we thought this was a big problem. And when we started researching this further, what we found in industrial reports particularly, that three out of four customers abandon their shopping carts in e-commerce. That's 75 customers out of 100 actually abandon their shopping cart. Now, some reports suggested it was as high as 95%. That means only five people out of 100 actually buy something after putting that product in the shopping cart. So is this really a big problem? Well, when we started trying to consider the size of it, it seemed pretty big. Big as in terms of $4.6 trillion big. That's nine zeros involved in here. And so if you can change this by one person, just one person, you can increase the total sale globally at e-commerce of up to $4.6 billion. These are massive economic numbers. And so we decided to tackle this challenge. And my co-authors in this were Dr. Zara Fazeli at the University of Brighton, and Dr. Keith Perks, who is also a reader at the University of Brighton. And we started looking into this problem, and what we found was that a lot of research had done, done in this area was predominantly about how to improve the website design, or how to improve, uh, say for example, the data analytics associated with it. So there were lots of computing and information management related papers. And we thought, can we tackle this from a human angle? because the person who is abandoning the cart is not generally a machine, but a human being. And so what kind of human element 
can we bring into this? To do that, we kept on searching and we, we thought about a particular idea called self-regulation. Self-regulation is about how do we regulate our goal orientation? How do we regulate our goal? How do we achieve our goals? In that regard, there is a very interesting theory called regulatory focus theory. This has been promoted by uh, a scientist called Professor E. Tory Higgins at University of Columbia. And uh, Professor Higgins suggested that there are two types of self-regulation foreseen. One is called promotion focus. The other is called prevention focus. So what are these? A promotion focus is the idea of gaining something. On the other hand, prevention is the idea of not losing something. So let me give you an example to make it more clear. Say I have two students on my course. One student comes to me and says, look, Pora, I want 70 marks in your module. And to get that 70 mark, tell me all the books and all the articles and all the discussion forums and all that material I need to read and prepare and work towards and so on and so forth. On the other hand, there could be student B who comes to me and says, look, Porov, I want to get 70 marks from your course, but tell me the bare minimum that I want to do. I need to do. I don't want to lose 70 marks. I want to get that, but I don't want to lose anything less than 70. So I want to make sure that I reach 70. So one person, person A, is focused on gaining knowledge. The other person also wants to do the same thing, but wants to do the bare minimum. They want to, they want to make sure that they do not lose 70, while in the other person wants to gain 70. So their outlook, their way of approaching the goal and the way of attaining that goal is very, very different. And we thought, can that Actually, can this self-regulation and this regulatory focus affect decision-making? So we decided to do some experiments around it. We did several experiments, but three were particularly used in this paper, which we published in uh, a journal. I'll give you the link to the paper a at a little later stage. So what we found? Well, first thing we found was that those gain-oriented people, those promotion-focused people, generally bought greater quantity of goods online than their prevention focus counterparts. But what was the actual revenue level difference? And what did we find was really astounding. If you see the chart on the right side, it shows that promotion focus people bought more than almost more than double the amount on online in online contact compared to their prevention focus um, counterparts. Uh, so what does this tell you? The first thing it tells you is that triggering or creating promotion focus triggers can lead people to buy more. And we thought, is that so? So we started looking further into it. We thought it was not that simple. If it was that simple, everyone would be able to do that. So we dug deeper into it. And so we did more experiments. And what did we find in those experiments? Well, here is a real gem. But that's what we found. The first thing we found was that when you put people into browsing conditions, that means that when people are browsing your website, it is very important to give them promotion focus triggers. So for example, you know, by buying this product, you will gain this, that, you will become unique, you will have greater advantages, some social mileage, so on and so forth. So you will get more, in a way, you will gain more by, by engaging with our website or our e-commerce platform. And that is the very important part of it, that people will get hooked to your website. But more importantly, what we found was that this is where they will put things in the shopping cart. Our problem is shopping cart abandonment. And we found a very unique trigger here, that when people are at the shopping cart stage, we need to provide them prevention focus triggers. So we change the orientation. When they are coming into our website, we provide them promotion focused messages such as of hope, such as of admiration such as of uniqueness and so on and so forth but when they are at the shopping cart stage you change the goal orientation to not losing 
also you may lose this don't lose this um why not buy it now act now because this deal may not be available for long and so on and so forth such kind of prevention focus creates a a trigger in consumer's mind to not abandon the shopping cart remember 1% change in shopping cart abandonment means 4.6 billion dollars worth of a difference and so by doing this what we find is is that using different kind of self regulation triggers you can actually create tremendous amount of business for your own business so let me summarize what we talked about shopping cart abandonment is a massive problem for the industry a lot of work has been done in regard to computing and elect, um and information management in that but the human aspect of it need to be looked into further and what we found was that through our study that self regulation is a very powerful mechanism if we utilize the right kind of triggers we can make shopping cart abandonment problem reduce somewhat for the organization the way to do it is that you focus on promotion focus type of messages when people are engaging and browsing with your website but when it comes to shopping cart level that is terms when they are buying you change your tack into prevention focus and that will lead you to greater success in business so thank you very much for this if you want to read more about this paper it is available in the, on the journal a uh, web page called psychology and marketing is the journal where this was published there is a link to that journal as well as the paper is called digital buying behavior the role of regulatory fit and self construal in online luxury goods purchase intentions so do read the paper do connect with me on social media and visit my website also all the very very best and thank you very much